The words impossible port, punching above its weight, and even black magic, very apt here, are thrown around often when it comes to games on diminutive hardware, with the staggered launch of one of the most impressive games of the year in Hogwarts, closing out its release legacy on the oldest hardware yet in Nintendo Switch. It could be another time to wheel out those tropes, but not me. Hogwarts is not a miracle port. Squeezing into the Switch, literally in the 7.4GB install compared to the 22 plus GB install of the last gen versions, reflected here in the Xbox One, it manages to be better than feared, yet rough as expected in places. So let's tick off the challenges, solutions and outcomes of this magic port using the closest matching hardware in the Xbox One. A single mode offers brightness and depth of field choices and nothing more. A step down from the Xbox One which has motion blur, film grain and even an unlocked frame rate toggle amongst a few others. Setting the baseline, this is a last generation game as we covered in our current and last gen performance reviews at launch. This already reduces the pressure on this Switch port as reductions have been made for the Xbox One, but more need to come. Least of which is the drastic reduction in CPU and GPU power along with memory size and bandwidth. This means we see similar levels of performance to the Xbox One and worse in some areas. Most of these look to be memory and or CPU bound sections of data streaming and keeping the world fed with data and cleaning up behind as it goes. More on that later. The result is a game that can run pretty well at 30 FPS in non-stressful areas outside of battles and loading sectors but during these, as seen here in the troll battle, it is often closer to the 50 millisecond frame time, meaning we see frame rates around 24 to 25 FPS for prolonged periods. These aren't great, and they can be felt without a frame graph analysis required. The biggest issues though come from general instantiation of objects and removing of others, which can cause huge 100 to 200 millisecond spikes, causing lurching and pausing, seeing low teens at times. As all other versions, including high-end PC, Hogwarts itself is the biggest culprit of these. Due to the same loading popping up as you cut classes and explore the halls, it can cause the worst issues, prolonging for a few seconds as objects, textures and even walls pop in like magic, appropriately for the location. It needs to be stressed that even the current generation and PC can have stutters and pausing in the game, but the switch is affected the most here and when in dense areas of alpha in trees, geometry, as in Hogwarts or animated characters, the performance is often sub 30 FPS. But the average across 10 plus minutes of tested sections is still 28.3 with a 95% frame time of 50 milliseconds. Certainly not great, but certainly far from the worst on switch and the amount being pushed here is impressive considering the size of the hardware. Repairing. 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 What was that? I was trying to beat him at his own game. The single biggest challenge the team face with this port is the tiny memory pool of the Switch. 4GB of LPDDR5 RAM is all they have. And the game likely gets around 3.5 gig of that, which is half that of the Xbox One at least. The fact that video capture is disabled in the game shows you they have taken all the RAM they can. The result is the game has been redesigned quite a bit for this port. Loading is long in the last generation versions, and by and large, it's the same here, and in actual fact, it can be shorter at certain points. But then again, it is loading less objects, less details, less textures, Therefore, comparatively, the Xbox One is still doing more in less time, although we're only talking the difference of around 15 seconds at worst. As expected, resolution is a big cut, targeting 1280x720 in docked mode with very little to no AA coverage, and it also appears to run DRS, with a counted low of approximately 1024x576, which is not a bad result. When in handheld mode though, it's often around 960x540. It again may run DRS and likely does, but expect this to be the best case or average result. Due to the small 720p screen, it never looks bad here, although still very noisy with shimmer, blurry textures break up often. This is all blown up on a large screen, and aside the very low pixel counts, the other huge cut is in texture quality.
The game can struggle with mipmap loading from its Unreal Engine 4 base, and this means even with such a drastic cut to texture assets, we still see late and low mipmaps, incredibly low texture filtering, although the opening prologue is much better. When in the open map of the game though, we see soft, soupy textures on everything. In addition, we also see massive light reductions, even the sun appears to be moved. Shadow maps are much shorter in cascade and quality, and interiors use less lights and shadow casting sources. The core PBR-based materials are also largely gone now, with the material layers reduced to base albedo and specular, giving it an Xbox 360 PS3-like generational look. Supporting this is the massive reduction in object triangle count to go along with the textures. Objects are less rounded and very 50 pence looking compared to the Xbox One. This has been increased though since the retail version, which you can see on screen, which has lower polygon count and reduced screen space ambient occlusion, as you can see mostly on the hair in these opening segments. It can't be. Areas have also been changed to save on space and performance. Windows are now playing textures with no animation, views are walled off to save on geometry load and save precious CPU and GPU time. But characters suffer the most, with faces and looks being impacted by the reduced LOD levels which can change the look and movement of faces as the animated bone rigging underneath is also dramatically reduced, leaving much stiffer and more robotic mouths and expressions as if they've overdone it on those filler injections. Shadows are very low resolution and can flicker and pop on faces when talking, and as you see this often, it does stand out. In side-by-sides and comparisons, you can see all these things add up to a stark difference between the Xbox One and Switch versions, from lights, shadows, details, hair cards, animation, textures, and world detail. In addition to this, we also see huge cuts to grass, tree quality, world clutter, NPCs, even motion blur, and screen space reflections are removed, along with many sections that had rain causing puddles are also reduced or taken away. Water bodies now only rely on projected cube maps for reflections, which is understandable as it can be a heavy GPU effect, particularly in bandwidth. CPU cycle savings are also used for distant characters, with it scaling from every 8th, 4th and 2nd frame as you draw closer, something matched by the level of detail and NPC count in the game. Both are reduced and now much lower levels of LOD are used, even at the closest point, and these reduce quickly when you step back, leaving faces that you only normally see on a YouTube attention grabbing thumbnail. But not this one. So the list of reductions is gigantic really, and much of these are memory related, as the Switch is simply packing far too little precious RAM to run such a big game without these cuts, no more apparent than in the increased sector points of loading exclusive to this port. Entering Hogmead used to be an open stroll up the main high street, but now on Switch, this is a minute or so to load. And when in Hogmead, entering shops was also seamless, but now we're met with a load for each door you enter, and the same for the way out. All this, alongside the existing extra loading the last gen versions added, means the Switch is competing with Starfield for the award of most loading encountered in 2023. And yet, with all these cuts, slashes, loads of loading, and stiff faces, the core magic, fun, and wonder of Hogwarts remains intact. You can still play the game just as you can on PS5 or Series X, fight the same battles, learn the same skills, and explore that same magical world, which in handheld form actually could be one of the biggest markets for this wizarding wonder. And a powerful witch, good one to know. You said you could get to the child when they came to Hogsmeade. That all you needed was a distraction. I gave you a distraction. I just watched a student take down your distraction. Who is this child? What are you not telling me? 
And finally, sound is better than I had feared. The quality and clarity is severely compressed as expected, with the side-by-sides allowing you to hear the impact this has, with the volume increased on the switch to compensate, and you also get less sound effects and even miss music at times, although this may be a memory-related bug. All the voices, the music, the sound, the effects are included, but through a decent TV setup, you may notice more pop and fizzle and compression issues than on any other version. Welcome, Butterbeer's on me. Heard about the attack. I shall be looking in on the other shopkeepers and residents shortly. The only brutes we usually have to deal with. <coughs> oh. How timely. Hogwarts was always going to be an uphill battle. Trying to fit the square into the Switch's circle, the team have achieved it. Loading, resolution and performance all take a big hit, but generally they are on the right side of playable compared to such big games as Pokemon Violet, and it certainly is pushing more demanding visuals, quality and scale. Although the world, detail and quality has been drastically severed, it has been intelligently so, with side by side showing the extensive use of plain textures for details, more billboard trees and blockier objects. Think more VHS copy than cinema film print. Fine detail, material accuracy, colour clarity, scale and overall quality are sacrificed heavily. But the same wonder can be made out if you squint and use some imagination and maybe a little magic. I was to grant access only to one with the key, and you didn't have the key. I have no patience for traitors. Anyway, that's it for all your handheld goodness and technical chops delivered. If you like what we do here on IGN Performance Reviews, then keep it IGN, and we'll catch you on the next one. Perhaps your young friend here will be more helpful. Uh, uh.